get this shot. Well, thanks for checking out the final installment of Walk This Way. We've been looking at a series. We've been looking at. We've been looking. Okay. Thanks for checking out the final installment of Walk This Way. We've been learning what it looks like to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Today, you're going to hear a message from two incredible friends of mine, and they both have the name Aaron. Aaron Johnson, who happens to be my assistant, and Aaron Talley, who is the director of LifePoint Leland. These are two incredible men of God. Aaron Johnson, I've had the chance to see him come to know Jesus, baptize him, marry he and his wife Janelle, see them you know, bring their little daughter Ava into the world, just great, great friends of mine. And Aaron Talley, we've traveled the world together, and he has church meeting in his living room every single weekend, and I just know that you're going to be incredibly blessed by this message and these two guys. So get ready, learn how to walk this way. What's up, Life Point Church? Woo! Thank you. You guys are so good to us. Man, I tell you what, we could not be more excited to be here. Yeah, y'all have a seat. Y'all going to make my head turn red. Um, <laughs> you know, Kelly said backstage, she said, man, you look sharp today. I said, well, when you got to be up here with this guy, man, when you look this good, you at least got to dress good because when you're blessed with a mug like this, you can't do much with it. So, uh, no, listen, hey, we're, we're so excited to be here this morning. Honestly, it's, it's pastor alluded to it. I have the privilege of hosting Life Point Leland in my house every hey, week. Speaking of Leland, let's welcome them right Woo! now. Life Point Come Leland. on, y'all. Welcome Leland. Woo! There they are. Thank you for letting us borrow Aaron for the day. Man, I tell you what, it's, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Every week, between 35 and 60 people come into my house on any given Sunday. You heard me, 60 people. My house ain't that big. Let's clap for that. Yeah. That's crazy. And here, here's the coolest part of all of it, right? Since we started Life Point Leland, six people in my living room have raised their hands saying, I'm trusting Jesus to be my That's Lord and Savior. Come on. Awesome. Incredible. It's really, it's really neat to see what God's doing. And, and here's, the, here's the thing, right? I want you guys to, to know this because here at main campus, you may say, oh man, well, I'm not a part of Leland or, or whatever, but I want you to know two things. Number one, you are a part of it uh, because one, I hope you're praying for us. Uh, we pray for you guys every week over there, and I hope that y'all are praying for us here. Um, because here's the deal, and can I just be selfish for a minute and just ask uh, for your prayer today, specifically? Uh, my wife and I, we've lived in our neighborhood for a long time, and we've always done stuff. And my wife is a wonderful woman. Uh, honey, I love you. I'm, I know that you're holding down the fort. Thank you for what you do for, for all of us at Life Point Leland. And, um, but one of the things that we've always done is just love on our community. Really, we didn't really have a, a, a reason why. We never asked for anything. We just did it because we just wanted to, and we felt like God would have us to do it. And uh, we've always done a big Christmas light show. You know, it's been on the news. Pastor did a, a, a sermon on it years ago. And, uh, but we always do it for our neighborhood. We literally block off the road, and there's normally about 100 to 200 people who show up at my house tonight uh, to launch the light show. Normally, we do it on Saturday. Yesterday was my oldest son's birthday, so my wife asked, hey, can we push it back to Sunday, to today? And after hemming and hawing a little bit, I said, okay, fine, we can do that. Um, didn't really want to, but I said, okay, that's fine. And then we thought about it, and we said, well, what if we made it a life point event? So we asked our volunteers, and, and man, I just want to brag on our dream team a little bit, because they're the same culture, the same DNA that the dream team has here. And if you serve, thank you for what you do, both at Main Campus and at Leland, too, you guys are absolutely the lifeblood of this church, and, and I want you to understand, those people, they literally said, no, absolutely, man. We'll come, we'll serve this morning, we'll be back this evening, and we'll serve again tonight. And so would y'all just be praying for this? Because obviously now we know why we've been loving on this community for as long as we have. Uh, and so we just would, would covet your prayers for tonight, that it would just go well, and that maybe we would be able to have some even more people join us on Sunday at church. So that's one way. The second way is this, man. And you know, Pastor Daryl, Pastor Daryl, uh, is over in Leland this morning, holding down the fort over there. Uh, and, and you know, it's funny, Pastor Daryl, when he gets up here, a lot of times he starts talking about what God's doing, man. He starts to get emotional. And I used to sit out there in the, in the audience, and I've known Pastor D for a long time. And I used to just think, man, that dude is a big old crybaby. You know what I mean? Like he's just a big old softy. And uh, but it was really, it was really amazing because as we're sitting here, as I'm sitting here singing, you know, all of a sudden, man, just the emotion just kind of overwhelmed me because I, I finally got what he's gotten for years. Because as as we're sitting here worshiping. And I want you guys to know that you are a part of this because as you're worshiping, as you're going after it, as you're singing, literally it's feeding that campus because that campus is feeding off of your energy, man. And, and they're just praising our savior with you. 
And so it's just so neat to me that we get to be a part of this body, to get to be a part of what God is doing here at LifePoint. And so we just couldn't be more grateful. So I just wanted to give you guys an update and just say thank you. That's amazing. One more time, can we make some noise for our online audience? Love you guys. Oh, well, I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. <laughs> had you stayed in there I'm for a while? I'm getting older. I? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Joints don't work the same way they used to. <laughs> Hope you guys had a, a good Thanksgiving. I'll tell you, uh, me and my family, we did things the easy way. We decided to go to Cracker Barrel. And uh, we thought, you know, if we went at some insane time, like 1130 and had Thanksgiving dinner at 1130 a.m., uh, that maybe that would be a good idea. We could get home, watch the football game. But apparently the rest of Wilmington thought the same thing. And so huh. that place was packed. No kidding. Packed out 1130 on Thanksgiving Day. Who eats... Thanksgiving dinner for breakfast. That was, I don't know. So, <laughs> anyways, it was, it was a fun time. It was great. No cleanup. And uh, today we're going to continue our series, Walk This Way. And we've been memorizing Micah 6.8. If today's your first time, don't worry. You can just mouth it along with the rest of the crowd. But I'd love to get you guys to join me. I'm sure you know this by now. Micah 6.8 is act justly. Love mercy. Walk humbly. That's right. One more time. Act, Act justly. justly. Love and mercy. Walk humbly. You guys have been paying attention. Great. Great. And so um, we've been learning about walking this way and walking the way that Jesus did. And so uh, we're going to cap off Walk This Way with a message we've titled Talk This Way. And so today we're going to be talking about the power of words. I want to invite you to open your Bibles. You can go to James 3. That's where we're going to spend the first part of this message, James 3. And if you didn't bring a Bible today, we'll have the scripture on the screens. Also, if you don't have the LifePoint app, I want to encourage you, go in the App Store or Google Market. You can download that thing. It's got all the notes, all the scripture for what we'll be talking about this weekend and every weekend. So you can kind of get a glimpse into the message and where we're headed. But I want to read James 3. And we're going to start in verse 3. It says this. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. And then look at your neighbor and say, it's about to get harsh. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. That's harsh. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. And so today, we're going to be talking about the power of your words. And here's the thing. I was doing a little research for this message and found out that humans on average speak 16,000 words Per day. Now, not everyone was created equal, and some do far more than that. Ladies, am I right? I'm okay. above average. That's why we've got you up here. That's it's it. Because you like to talk. My daughter can knock that out by breakfast. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, but if you're anything like me, you probably don't put as much thought into the words that come out of your mouth as you should. I know I don't. I just let them fly. And so today, we're just going to discuss a few things, a few observations about um, words, and so I want to start with this. This is point number one, and I believe you should be taking notes. There's great note cards in the seat backs in front of you, or there in Leland, you've got note cards as well. Um, write this down, because note takers get to heaven first. Everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> number one, words are powerful. Words are powerful. Proverbs 18 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. All throughout the Bible, we see that God does um, amazing things and miraculous things on, uh, or as the result of words. So we see it right off the bat. Chapter 1, 
Genesis, God's creating, and he does so by speaking words. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Um, another time we see God tells Moses to speak to the rock, and uh, he chooses not to. That doesn't end up well for him, but obviously it was a big deal to God. Um, let's go into the New Testament. Peter and John are approaching the temple. They see a crippled beggar, and he asks them for money. They say, money we don't have, but what we do, in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And he starts walking, amazing. Um, the first time that the Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles, Peter was speaking, and it falls on the Gentiles. Huge moment in the New Testament, in the early church. And then also we see um, another example is a Roman centurion approaches Jesus, and he says, um, and I, I love this, he says, I'm not even worthy to have you come under my roof, but I know at just one word, you can heal my servant. And so we know that a word from God is a powerful thing. And as a matter of fact, as we were preparing for this, I heard you telling a story about a word that Faith received, your wife. Why don't you tell us a little about that? You know, what's funny about that story is she's not here right now. And she said, don't you dare talk about me on stage. Careful. Ed. Um, she's probably so watching. She is watching right now. <laughs> Hi. I'm at a safe distance through a camera. <laughs> so, uh, no, what's really amazing is, so back when LifePoint was still portable, like literally still, you know, loading up trailers and trucks and all that kind of stuff, meeting in schools, probably sometime around the Roland Grice time, before this facility ever came to be, uh, my wife looked at me one day and she says, I think we're going to have a church in our home. <laughs> oh, you're serious, are you? Okay. Well, amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I wish, you know, I wish I could have said that that was like my reaction, but like, uh, it wasn't, I was like, uh, okay. You know, Crazy. yeah. I mean, like, what do you say to that? I was, my thought was, okay, I got a church. It's called life point. I like it. We've been there a long time. I'm not moving. Um, but obviously God had different plans. And so now clearly, uh, the words that my wife did speak, uh, came to fruition. So words really are powerful. Yeah, that's incredible. Incredible story. And so uh, that was what? How long? Five years ago? It's been a while. It's years. Yeah. Was, Life Point leaving wasn't even on the radar at no. that point. And here you are with... Life uh, Point campus wasn't even on the radar. With people that are watching right now, meeting in your living room of your home. Church in your house. How about that? Word from God. Uh, number two, words can be harmful or they can be helpful. Words can be harmful or they can be helpful. I know you guys know this one, so you can chime in when you get it. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt All me. All right, we're gonna have to try that one more time. Come on, <laughs> sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, what a lie that is, right? Uh, hey, y'all gotta talk louder, because Leland, we do that with y'all, so they didn't hear y'all on that first one. <laughs> Aaron, you're bald. Oh. Yeah. What? I mean, just not very nice, right? Right? I'm sure you guys have had insults hurled at you. They, I mean, they don't just, just fly over your shoulder. I mean, they, they stick. They hurt. And so um, are insults harmful or helpful? Harmful. That's right. That's right. Let me list a few. How about these words? I hate you. Right? That's pretty strong. Yeah. It's pretty strong. You make me sick. Nobody cares about you. Mm. Why can't you be more like so-and-so? Um, I'm never speaking to you again, right? These words are harmful. Growing up, uh, I had this nickname that kind of, I don't know how it originated exactly. I'll tell you the story though. Uh, the nickname was Boo, and that sounds harmless enough, but the idea was my parents got together, um, they got pregnant, or my mother did, and so they decided they would do the right thing, make it right, get married. Um, they were not compatible, didn't work. They divorced before I was one. And so I grew up with this nickname, Boo, which was short for Boo Boo. Now, my parents were very loving. I grew up in, in a great, you know, they, they separated, but they were both loving parents. And so I don't think they meant harm from it. But let me ask you guys, is a nickname like Boo Boo when you were actually a mistake from your parents, is that harmful or helpful? Harmful. That's right. Now, in Christ, I've shed that label. <laughs> But I just want to speak to you guys today because maybe some of you were told the same thing. I just want to say this. You are not who people say you are. That's right. You are who God says you are. Amen. Let me say it one more time because I know that somebody here mm -hmm. needs to hear this. You are not who people say you are. You are who God says you are. He loves you so much. He sent his son Jesus to die on a cross 
for you. He's got a plan and a purpose for you. The Bible tells us that he has works, good works, that he has planned in advance for you to do in this life. And so I just want to make sure you get that. But obviously, that label was harmful. And so, um, you know, actually, when I met Aaron, um, I had just started coming to church. I was on the fence about the whole Jesus thing, uh, still living the nightlife. And so I showed up half the time, drunk, hungover. My wife was dragging me to church. Thank you, honey. And so, um, anyways, they told me my next step was to join a small group so I could ask questions about God. And so I did. And Aaron happened to be the leader of that small group. It was a starting point group. And uh, one of the days you took me aside and, and you just spoke over me. What did, what did you say? Why don't you tell people? Well, to, to kind of know that story, um, you'd have to kind of be there in the room. So we were in Myrtle Grove Middle School. We used to meet, we were talking about this backstage. We used to meet in a hallway during the second service, all pipe and draped up. So there was really no privacy as people are sharing all these yeah. deep things going on inside their heart and life. But, um, but it was really amazing because Aaron uh, has a very lovely wife named Janelle. And one of these things was not like the other. So Janelle would come, you know, and this was Janelle's posture throughout starting point. And starting point is basically an opportunity. Basically, we've built it into growth track now. But starting point was, was kind of an opportunity for new believers to come in and ask questions. And so, uh, you know, Janelle would sit very, she was intense, man. She was ready. And after talking to Janelle, you know, I realized she kind of knew the Lord. So I didn't really understand what her whole involvement in this thing was. And then you'd look at Aaron and Aaron was like this. And so there was one of these things was not like the other, but one of the things when Aaron would open up and he would share um, that just really never really settled well with me is he would share this story about, you know, his past and how he was, you know, he was labeled a mistake and all these different things. And it just never sat well with me, but I never really knew what to say. And I don't know, I felt like one day the Lord just kind of spoke to me and said, hey, he's not a mistake and I got bigger plans for him. And so I pulled him aside and I shared that with him and obviously, you know, Looks like God did have bigger plans for, for my man here. Yeah. So. Well, thank you for sharing that with me, being obedient. Um, I had never had anyone tell me that I was going to do great things for God before, and so uh, that was foreign to me, but I just want to thank you. It stuck with me. Mm-hmm. And so your words are powerful. I just want to let you know that your words are powerful. And um, so Ephesians 4.29 says this. It says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear it. And so you gave grace to me hearing it. And so I just, everyone needs an Aaron Tally in their corner. Thank you for doing that. Um, But it says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. And so I I started with, I hate you and I never want to talk to you again. Let Let me do the flip side and share a couple that might make you feel a little better. How about, I love you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm proud of you. You look good. I like your haircut. No, those pants don't make your butt look big, right? (laughs) You should say that one no matter what. (laughs) These things, harmful or helpful? Helpful, right? Everybody likes those words. Everybody wants those things said about them, right? And so um, you've heard the saying, talk is cheap. Right? And usually it means a fight's about to break out, but I want to redeem that term today. And so talk is cheap. It's free. So why wouldn't you let your words fly and use them to build others up? Right? I mean, it doesn't cost you a thing. If you're thinking something good, then let it fly. Let someone know. And uh, I remember your son used to run around the hallways uh, when we were meeting at Roland Grice as a church. Uh, Nehi, Aiden's his name. And he would just walk around encouraging the heck out of anyone who would listen to him. And he'd just walk up and be like, I like your hair. I like your belt. I'm like, you, you can't even see my belt, but, but thank you. And he'd just walk around and just, you look good today. I was like, wow, that guy's awesome. <laughs> and so I'm sure that comes with intentionality. I don't know if you guys have something that you're saying to him all the time. Let us know what you guys do. Well, when it comes to raising kids, uh, we don't have the answer, nor will we claim to. Um, you know, it's one of those things that I feel like that with Faith and I, we just try to speak to their spirits. Um, you know, we try to speak to what's in them. You know, listen, like everybody else, if you have kids, uh, there's times when they're unruly or misbehaving or disobedient or whatever. And, you know, we don't talk about those behaviors. Obviously, we discipline when it's needed and those kinds of things. But when we 
Pray it, in, you know, before we put him to bed at night, sometimes we'll just speak to what, what God's put in him. You know, God, I thank you that my son is obedient. Thank you that he's a good listener. Thank you that he tries hard in school. Thank you that he cares about people. And we just try to speak those things over them. And ultimately, you know, God has put something special in my little guy's heart. It's kind of funny when you do ministry in a house, uh, sometimes he'll, he'll sneak downstairs because he volunteers, which really just gives him free range to roam around. Um, but he, uh, he, he, listen, you know, you gotta start him young, I guess. Um, but at the same time, he, he will come down and listen to Pastor Jeff. And I, I hope you're listening to this, buddy, because the reality is the words that you do say um, really do matter, you know, and they are free. And Aiden, he did it last night. Uh, he, you know, we, we took him out for his birthday and the guy came over to the table and he said, man, you got cool hair, you know? And the guy was like, well, thanks, you know? So um, words really are free, even if it's just a compliment. It can make somebody's day. Yeah, I hope, uh, I hope to be in Aiden Tally one day, <laughs> just walking around, dishing out compliments. Everybody likes compliments. Um, married men, single guys, let me give you a little tip. This comes straight from the comedian Chris Rock. He says that, that women need three things in life, food, water, compliments, <laughs> and the occasional pair of shoes. <laughs> but hey, don't get mad at me. They're his words, not mine. So I'm just saying, it, you know, be an encourager. But here's the other side of that. You also have the right to remain silent. You don't have to speak your mind all the time, right? Silence is golden sometimes. Uh, you guys have heard this one. Here, finish this for me. If you don't have anything nice to say, that's right, don't say a word. Proverbs 18.6 uh, says, a fool's lips walk into a fight and his mouth invites a beating. <laughs> I love that. Proverbs 17, even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. I heard a quote, um, I don't know where it came from, but it said, it's better to remain silent and be thought of fool instead to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> I was like, that. I like that. And so just want to remind you guys, you don't have to say everything on your mind all the time, right? I'm not talking about like, like flattery. Don't say it if it's not true. Flattery is when you say something to someone's face that you wouldn't say behind their back. Um, it's like the opposite of gossip, right? And so I'm not talking that. I'm just saying be an encourager. Speak life to people on a regular basis. And that brings us to the third point. Last one. Words come from the heart. Number three, words come from the heart. Luke 6.45 says, the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person, out of the evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So basically the Bible says that what's within will determine what comes out. I've heard Pastor Jeff say multiple times, when you bump into someone, the first thing that comes out of them, that's kind of their condition. And so uh, I just wanna ask you guys, how's your heart? How's your heart? You know, the Bible tells us we need to guard our heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, Guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And so maybe, maybe you're like, you know, my heart isn't good. And uh, how, how do I fix that? And let me just ask you this. If what's on the inside determines what comes out, let me ask, what are you putting in? You know, are you pursuing the things of God? What are you watching? What are you listening to? What are you, uh, what are you subjecting yourself to? Do you have a small group? Do you have people in your life that are speaking encouragement over you like Aaron did to me? or like uh, little Aiden does all the time. You have people that are, that are um, encouraging you in the faith. I just wanna ask you, you know, are these the things that are going on in your life? And so uh, I know that you've got a challenge that you wanted to, to give to people. Why don't, you, why don't you share that? I think it's powerful. Well, I think, um, I think it is about the condition of the heart, right? And, and where our hearts are. And I think, um, you know, when, when Pastor called me up and said, hey, you know, I think it'd be cool for the folks in Leland to be able to see you and for you to share with our main campus and that kind of thing. Um, I feel like that the Lord immediately put something on my heart soon after that call. And it was the story out of 1 Samuel 14 and it involves words. And so I, I'm not gonna go through it today. I'm just gonna kind of briefly summarize it for you, but I'd encourage you to go back and read it. Uh, basically in the story, you've got a guy named Jonathan who's the prince and you've got his armor bearer, right? Because back in that day, he was a prince, he had a sword and armor and all this kind of things and his armor bearer carried his armor for him. You had his dad who was the king, his name was Saul, and then you had the rest of the group called the Israelites and they were all hiding in caves. 
and I'll get to why they were hiding in a minute, but basically this big group, this army, right, called the Philistines had come down, okay, and had kind of taken over this land that God had already given to the Israelites. And so Jonathan has just kind of eventually had enough. And so he looks over to his armor bearer, and to me, by the way, this is really the story of Life Point Church. Jonathan looks over to his armor bearer and he says, hey, let's go over there and show ourselves. Not a very good military attack, by the way, to show yourself. He says, let's go over and show ourselves to this outpost and perhaps, perhaps God will act on our behalf. And his armor bearer looks at him and says, hey man, do whatever you got in mind. I'm with you, heart and soul. And to me, that's the story of Life Point Church. Pastor Jeff riding in a car saying, hey, I feel like I'm supposed to start a church in Wilmington, North Carolina. And Pastor Daryl saying, I can, do, I can do Wilmington. And so Jonathan, I'm going to, again, just kind of summarize this story. But Jonathan goes over. They show themselves. Man, they, 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 they go up. They climb up this cliff. They start fighting this, these other guys. They kill 20 people. All of a sudden, God shows up. The earth starts to shake. Stuff starts going crazy. Saul, his dad, right, over here, the king, sees what's going on, looks over and says, who's missing? They find out it's his son. Now, what you want to know about this story and what you want to know about Saul is Saul was afraid. He didn't want to go attack these people. And all he had left, and I use that word on purpose, all he had left was 600 people, 600 men to help him fight this battle. And the reason why was because they were so afraid they had run and hid. So all he had left was 600 people and he was afraid. And so he's sitting there, he's watching all this go down. He realizes it's his son. He calls over the priest and he says, hey, pray for us, you know, get, get God on our side. Meanwhile, God's over here making the earth shake and all these things over here take place for Jonathan because Jonathan has stepped out in obedience and already doing what God has said. This is your land. Go take it back. Finally, Saul says to the priest, hey, withdraw your hand. We got to go. He goes over. The 600 men follow him over. They start fighting and they start really uh, defeating the enemy, right? And then the rest of the Israelites come out of the caves and come out of hiding. And then they all get to join in the victory. And so I don't know where you find yourself today, but it, you know, we read James and that's where we started. And if you go back one chapter, you know, the, the Bible says that faith without action is dead. And so Aaron asked the question, where's your heart? I guess my question would be, where are your feet? Let's pray. Today, if, um, if you're here and man, you're saying, you know, I, I want to be like that. I want to be like Jonathan. Perhaps maybe God can use me. I want you to know that you have a father who's a good father, like we sang about in that first song. And he wants a relationship with you. He wants you more than anything else. And I believe with all of my heart that that's what we were sent here today to tell you. And so if that's you, I'm just gonna pray a prayer in just a minute. And just like words can be meaningless without a sincere heart, this prayer can be meaningless without a sincere heart. You don't have to pray out loud. You can pray right there in the quietness of your heart, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. And if that's you today, I just wanna invite you to join me in praying that. With nobody looking around, if that's you today, just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I make you my Lord and my Savior. I confess my sin. I receive your Holy Spirit. And I believe that you have great things in store for me. My friends, if you just prayed that prayer, we believe that the miracle we sang about in that third song has just happened in your life. And at LifePoint, we like to celebrate that. We believe that everybody at LifePoint has a next step. And you just took yours. And so we want to celebrate with you and then help you find the next one and the next one. But to start that journey, it takes boldness like Jonathan. It takes showing yourself and saying, hey, I'm willing to step out. I'm willing to say perhaps. And so if that's you, I'm going to count to three with nobody looking around. And if that's you, I just want you to raise your hand up because we want to celebrate you and we want to pray for you. So if that's you, we just raise your hand on three. One, two, three. If that's you and you just prayed that prayer this morning, would you just raise your hand? I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand. You can put your hands down. 
Guys, I believe that there's people here too and, and I really feel like that when the Lord gave me the opportunity to present this and that call came from Pastor Jeff, I felt like there was one more group of people in the room and I felt like that was the group of people who knew they had been called by God. They knew God had put something on their life. But they've been like Saul. They've been waiting in the wings. They've been praying about it and waiting for God to show up and God's already over there fighting the battle. And it's time for you to get involved. Or maybe you've been hiding. Maybe you're running from, from that call that God's put on your life. And I'm just here to tell you today, it's time to come out of hiding. It's time to step into the destiny that God has called you to. It may not be comfortable, but it's your next step. And if that's you today, I want to pray for you too. Because I truly believe that there is a bunch of people here that were in the first service. And I believe there's a bunch of people here who are wrestling with that same thing in their life. And if that's you, I want to pray for you. I want to, I want to walk this out with you. So if that's you, would you just put your hand up on the count of three? One, two, three. If that's you, put your hand up. Let me see it. Hands in every section. Every section, all over the room. Church, no matter what point you found yourself in that story, whether you're Jonathan saying perhaps, whether you're Saul who's afraid, or whether you're the Israelites who come out of hiding, everybody got to take part in the victory. So as a symbol of our togetherness and Leland I want you to do it as well can we just all just lift our hands as we close in prayer can we just all lift our hands in surrender as we pray together because I believe that all of us united are going to win this city are going to win these communities for the gospel and for the kingdom of God Lord we praise you this morning we thank you for what you are doing I thank you for every hand that is raised God I thank you for the people who have crossed from death to life. I thank you for the people who have owned it today and said, yes, Lord, I've been running. I've been hiding from what you've been telling me to do and no more. I want to step out in faith. I want to serve you. I want to honor you. I want to glorify you. I want to, with new boldness, with new faith, with new freshness, God, I want to step into what you've called for me and I want to see and experience all that you have for me. I know that it's going to be scary. I know that it's going to take faith. I know that I'm going to have to step out and trust you. But God, right now today, I pray for that boldness over each and every person in this room, especially those who chose to show themselves like Jonathan and say, perhaps. God, we bless you because you are worthy of our blessing. We praise you because you are worthy of our praise. And we thank you for who you are. And we speak victory over this body and the privilege to get to be a part of your body. We worship you this morning and praise you today. And all God's people said, 